So the goal of Sotora is twofold. It's basically to, to enable to make software development more agile and more secure. The idea is you want to engage with formal verification as early as possible. You need to use formal verification in addition to any other means. So it's not the case that formal verification or, or, or the Sertora is replacing the human. We are empowering the human, maybe we are saving some human effort, but at the end of the day, security is something which is built by human and technology. So uh, my background is formal verification and static analysis. I'm academic in this field. I uh, finished my, my thesis a long time ago. And uh, after that, I, I went to the industry for a short period. And after that, I joined Tel Aviv University as a professor, basically building uh, the techniques in the area of formal verification, uh, building a core, core algorithm which is used there. And uh, four years ago, together with my student, Shelley Grossman, we decided to use this formal, to make this formal verification in a, sec in a security company called Sotora, which is uh, preventing bugs before and after auditing. It's a technology that is supposed to make your code more secure. So the goal of Sotora is twofold. It's basically to, to enable to make software development more agile and more secure. And these things usually contradict each other, but the idea is we want to, do, we want to make it without contradiction. The idea is that every time, even from the design, you make sure that your code is correct and you prevent errors early. And we want to do it before the code is deployed, after the code is deployed. At the moment, we have a single product, but we are building more products, and the idea of this arsenal of products will help you more, make your code more secure and innovate. And you can, you can make the, uh, the, uh, the software more agile. The software development will be more agile. There are a lot of things which are misunderstood of the area of formal verification, and Sertora in, in, in particular. One of the biggest mistakes is when do you want to use Sertora? And some people think that you have to use Sertora last, and we think that you have to use Sertora first. The idea is you want to engage with formal verification as early as possible. Hopefully, when you are thinking of your code, when you are designing your code, and that's actually one, and we have a lot of time, but we have customers coming to us too late, okay? Another thing which is a bit confusing about formal verification, this technology, that some people think that it's bulletproof. So it's think, okay, once I formally verify, I don't need to test it. Like this is a, a big quote from one of the giants of computer science called Dijkstra that says sort of you don't, and people thought that you don't need to test the code. You need to use formal verification in addition to any other means. Okay, and in particular, one of the competitors that we have in this space is auditing firms. So there are fantastic auditing firms which are doing these things and we are not replacing them. We are empowering them to do a better job. We can do a better job before them. Sometimes we find bugs after them, but we are empowering them. We are not replacing them. So that's, so that's one, uh, another thing which is misunderstood. You are working with chain security, you are thinking use, to use them. Spearbit is already using them. Code Arena takes to is using them. We see them as, as a, now Open Zeppelin is using them. So we see them more as a partner. And the idea is that we don't think that the, this is the case that the computer will replace the human. And related to that, another confusion about formal verification, that people think that formal verification is a push button is something that you can yet use, but in effect, you need to write the specification. And the biggest problem is writing the specification. And the idea is that actually, this is the case with auditors, the developers, and us could be useful. And, and sort of the, the other problem for my verification is technology. And that's what we are doing. But the problem of writing the specification is equally hard problem, and this needs to be solved by human. So it's not the case that formal verification or, or, or the Sertora is replacing the human. We are empowering the human, maybe we are saving some human effort, but at the end of the day, security is something which is built by human and technology. And Sertora wants to be the technology company in formal verification and beyond. We are building now this foresight, other tool, but the idea is we want to empower the humans to make code more secure and more agile. So in the future, we are hoping that Sertora will be an important part of the development in DeFi and perhaps beyond. And the idea is we are hoping that people will use, not necessarily Sertora, but they use formal verification as like unit testing, that people see that as a, some credit of security. 
And we want to basically have people like almost like insurance, showing you that code is more secure once it is used by Sartora. And we see Sartora also as ally to the DeFi, making the DeFi sort of more accepted because in DeFi code is low. And if you have a code which is verified, maybe instead of if code is low, you'd have code with spec being the low. So the idea is you, you can read the code, but you can also read the specification and make high level specification of the design and of the code part of even the blockchain. So this is part of the, when people use this, even the large community, they can see what was verified. And in the particular of our partnership with BlockSwap, it's very interesting because BlockSwap is producing code that other partners are consuming. So they can use Sartora to make sure that the changes that they have done, they comply with the requirement. So there's sort of two problems that can happen with Sartora. One is that because we did this over approximation, it could be that we report errors which are not real. But you are talking about the other part, that there are some errors which are missed and by the Sartora. And for that, we have several solutions. The biggest value is this foresight, is this tool that we check the code once it's deployed. But there are other methods in computer science and informal method. We can generate a proof that somebody else checked. It's something that we can think of. Down the line, of course, we have a software. It is complex and it can have bugs. And we're also calling our external open source software. They're also complex and they can have bugs. We can either generate some proof for each of the facts. We can have community reviewed things. But we are thinking now of this complementary tool that instead of checking the code before it's deployed, it's checking the code after deploy. And it guarantees some property that we haven't verified. For example, there is an interaction between different contracts and we want to make sure this interaction is correct. We can try to check it before the code is deployed, but we can think of checking it after the code is deployed. We are thinking of something else that is on the chain. You are checking the particular execution is doing it. So we are thinking of some kind of a monitoring framework, which I think is something similar to what the block swap is, do, is doing. But the idea is in, in the block swap, it sounds like you are building specialized thing. What we are doing, we are building this prover. This is Chandra Nandi who is here. She's building this new product that is going to be on the chain. And on the chain, it will improve, it will call our prover. And it will check some, for some property that either we couldn't verify because there was limitation, or maybe there was a mistake. So it's, it's giving you an orthogonal check. It's the idea is that you have an environment and you check it statically, but now you want to check it dynamically and you want to monitor.